Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of our fourth module in our balanced assessment series where we are focusing on eliciting evidence of student learning. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I'm joined today by Misty Higgins and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. What resources are available to support Kentucky educators as they work to create and implement a comprehensive balanced system of assessment that is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then also, how can schools and districts utilize the formative assessment process to help students meet the grade level expectations built within the CAS? We are currently in our second year of the three year implementation plan it is focused on balanced assessment, so really addressing that question of how do we know if students have learned? And as part of our fall 2020 professional learning series, the very first module on comprehensive balanced system of assessment was released in September and is available on kystandards.org. Our October module really took a closer look at formative assessment, a deep dive from that broad we started with to that granular size at the classroom level. And now drilling down even deeper at the classroom level was our November module, which focused on clarifying learning progressions, learning goals and success criteria to our current module, eliciting evidence of learning, which really takes a closer look at the strategies for eliciting evidence aligned to the depth of the standards and criteria for high quality classroom assessments. And so why? Why would we have this focus on formative assessment? Well, we know from the research that when the formative assessment process is implemented in an intentional and purposeful way, it can greatly impact student achievement. And at the heart of the formative assessment process, it is about noticing, recognizing, and responding to that evidence of student learning so that both the teacher and the students can help move toward whatever the established learning goals might be. We know that for our students, when the formative assessment process is a part of our daily teaching and learning, it can help foster self-regulation and student ownership as they become more active participants in the learning process. And it also gives students the feedback they need on what their possible next steps might be to help reach those intended learning outcomes. For teachers, we know that the formative assessment process gives them the feedback they need to determine how effective their instruction was in helping students reach those learning goals. And finally, allows us to identify students who may be in need of additional instructional supports, as well as those students that are ready for enrichment. So that is a broad reasoning of why we really want to focus on formative assessment. So now let's take a closer look at this new module and how it will help us in eliciting meaningful evidence of student learning. So module three introduced us to the three critical questions that we want students to be able to answer as a part of the formative assessment process. And those three questions are, where am I going? Where am I now? And where to next? And like Carrie said earlier, when students are able to answer these three questions, it is going to help create that student ownership and foster that self-regulation that are critical to the learning process. Module three focused in on helping students answer the first question of where am I going? And it talked about how important it is for teachers to start with the standards and then from that to develop, clarify, and share the learning goals and success criteria with the students so that they're able to know where they are headed. So that brings us to module four. Module four is going to continue to build on module three, and it's going to focus in on eliciting evidence of student learning. So once students have an understanding of where they are headed and the learning goals and the success criteria that will tell them when they get there, now we're helping students answer, answer the question of where am I now? So this is about helping to elicit meaningful evidence of student learning that's going to tell them where they are in relation to the intended learning outcomes so that we can determine next steps. 
So for module four, the learning goals are for part one that we want participants to understand the role that evidence of student learning plays in the formative assessment process, as well as what constitutes meaningful evidence of student learning. In part two of this module, we want participants to understand the importance of using a variety of different evidence gathering strategies and to utilize those at different points in a lesson, as well as understanding the kind of evidence that's provided through each of those strategies. The success criteria for this module, we want participants to be able to evaluate and improve on the evidence gathering strategies they utilize at the classroom level to ensure that they do provide meaningful evidence of student learning. We also want participants to be able to plan for meaningful evidence gathering opportunities that will support the formative assessment process. Module four consists of three sessions. Both session one and two are the professional learning participants will develop the content understanding around eliciting meaningful evidence. Session three is where participants will apply that content understanding through a teacher collaboration activity, and each session will take about an hour. When we focus in on session one, this is part one of the professional learning, you will see that it starts with an introduction as well as a quick refresher of the formative assessment process. Section three focuses on evidence of student learning. So what are some of the key considerations we need to keep in mind when we're designing those opportunities at the classroom level? Session four focuses on what is meaningful evidence. So this section is going to unpack some of the major elements of meaningful evidence that are designed to inform both teachers and students in where they are and what next steps in the learning process might be. Section five is focused on eliminating barriers, making sure that we are looking at the evidence gathering opportunities that we create through a fairness and equity lens to ensure that each opportunity provides all students the chance to show their thinking. And then you'll see it wraps up with that reflection. Session two continues the professional learning. Again, it's going to start with that introduction as well as a quick refresher of the formative assessment process. And then session or section three will take a closer look at some lesson design considerations. So what are different aspects of student thinking that we need to keep in mind at different points in a lesson? So thinking about the beginning of a lesson, the middle of a lesson and at the end of a lesson. Section four will focus on five evidence gathering routines that teachers can utilize at the classroom level to support the formative assessment process. Section five is looking at planning for meaningful evidence. So this is going to provide some possible examples of evidence gathering opportunities that might be utilized for some learning goals and success criteria from each of the four content areas aligned to the Kentucky academic standards. In module three, we use some examples of learning goals and success criteria for math, social studies, science, and reading and writing. This module will continue to build on that by fleshing out what the different opportunities for uh, gathering evidence might be. And then again, it ends with that reflection. Session three is where participants are going to apply their understanding through that teacher collaboration activity. You're going to see it starts with a welcome as well as a quick refresher as some key highlights around eliciting evidence and most of the time will be spent in a lesson tune up activity. This activity uses a structured protocol that allows participants the opportunities to refine an upcoming lesson by looking at the evidence gathering opportunities that they are utilizing, making sure they are intentional and aligned to the learning goals and success criteria and are going to give the information needed to help the teacher and the students to move learning forward. And it'll end with that debrief and reflection. And so like Misty shared, this module is broken down into three sessions, and these sessions include a facilitator's guide, PowerPoint presentation, links to additional resources or handouts, and a video example where you are able to observe how a teacher uses the formative assessment process in her math classroom to really plan for, gather, and elicit meaningful evidence of student learning. Within the video, See how the teacher uses questioning, prompting, and cueing as strategies to scaffold students in the process while offering opportunities for that productive struggle to promote student independence through self-regulation. 
And as always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to either of us. Misty and I are happy to clarify or address any wonderings you may have along the way. And remember, you can access this module if you go to the Balanced Assessment PL modules icon under General PL Opportunities on kystandards.org. Thank you for joining us today.